My name is Tom Eno. I'm the uh, chair of Pacific Commerce Bank in Los Angeles, and it's uh, my pleasure uh, to chat with one of the true Japanese American leaders uh, in our country, uh, Irene uh, Hirano Inoue. Uh, as a matter of background, Irene was born and raised in Los Angeles. Uh, she was a graduate of USC with a BS and MPA in public administration. In her early years, she was a National Project Coordinator and Consultant to the U.S. Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. She was President and CEO of the Japanese American National Museum and during a brief transition, their Executive Advisor. The museum conducts an international program of research, collections, exhibitions, and education of Japanese American history and heritage. Currently, from 2009, Irene has as president, led the global initiatives of the U.S.-Japan Consul headquartered in Washington, D.C. The U.S.-Japan Consul is a not-for-profit educational institution which fosters an international network of Japanese-American leaders who work with Americans and Japanese leaders committed to ensuring strong U.S.-Japan bilateral relationships. She has had numerous awards and numerous honors, as well as community affiliations, which has filled four pages of double space distinctions. Currently, she, she sits on seven major not-for-profit boards, of which she is immediate past president of the Kresge Foundation and the current chair to the Ford Foundation. In spite of all these commitments, she finds time to maintain the most important relationship she has, and that is with her husband, the Senator Daniel K. Inoue. I'm very, very pleased to spend a little time with you, Irene, and thank you very much for being here. Thanks, Tom. We know that you come from very, very strong family roots, and you, we also know that your father had been extraordinarily successful. Can you talk to us a little bit about your family background and how it impacted your life? Well, as you mentioned, I grew up in Los Angeles. Um, and actually, I went to school at, in uh, Gardena, so I went to uh, Gardena High, High School. <clears throat> and my father, who uh, was an Nisei, uh, was in the U.S. military like so many of the Niseis. He served in the uh, military intelligence service, was actually in the Army when World War II broke out and was set to be discharged um, the day after Pearl Harbor. Uh, and my father, like many of the Niseis, um, after World War II and after they came back, um, and in his case went back to uh, Gardena, uh, began to start a series of businesses. And so he was really an, um, an um, entrepreneur in the true sense. And, and I remember growing up the many various ventures that he started, some of which um, went off and some did not. Um, and my mother was born in Japan, and my early years I spent with my grandfather. I was the first child um, to be born, and many of my aunts and uncles after the war were still living at our house. Um, and so for the first few years growing up, most of my time was actually spent with my grandfather. So I have very fond memories of um, time spent with him. So family was very important. My father was the eldest of eight children, and we grew up having many of my aunts and uncles and a lot of cousins um, stop and visit and spend time. So that was, it, it was a very important part of, of my life. Um, my father, um, I think because of his drive and his willingness to take risks and um, his effort to build a successful business, um, maybe not directly at the time, but certainly as I look back now, I realize that a lot of that drive that he had and the willingness to take risks were mm -hmm. things that um, I'm sure that I incorporated much greater than other people did. Uh, your career has largely evolved in the not-for-profit sector. Today, you're truly recognized as being one of the very important people in that space. Uh, so I guess I'm curious as to, uh, did you early on decide to move in that direction and what motivated you to move into that segment of our active community? Mm -hmm. Well, I, um, as I was um, in high, high school, um, and perhaps even younger, I used to help out at my father's office. Uh, and so I spent a lot of time w working in the business sector as I was going to school. 
And I'm not sure what prompted me, but I made the decision fairly early, early on that I was not going to go into the business side. Mm -hmm. um, so when I made the decision to go to USC and made the decision to um, major in, in public administration, I decided at that point that rather than go on the uh, business school side, that I would go into the um, public administration side. So I think from early on that I felt that I could um, that I had an interest and could make a contribution uh, in the not-for-profit world. You have chaired two of the largest not-for-profit organizations in the United States, the Kresge Foundation and the Ford Foundation. What are some of their priorities and uh, what are their primary focuses? The Ford Foundation is the second largest foundation in the, the world next to the Gates Foundation. Mm -hmm. And the Ford Foundation's focus is on social justice, and so they're a global foundation, so it has offices um, in a number of, of uh, places around the world. Uh, the uh, Kresge Foundation, which I started with first, and I'm still a trustee, as you noted, um, funds a lot of uh, community um, um, activities in the U.S. It, its funding is almost entirely in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I got to know both of the presidents of those foundations at the time that I was recruited onto the board um, through the work at the National Museum. We were grant recipients mm -hmm. of both of those foundations. And in the course of doing work on those grants, got to know the uh, presidents. And uh, so as opportunity would have it as they were searching for um, new, tr uh, new uh, trustees, um, was asked to, to join their boards. You were the original CEO of the Japanese American National Museum. What did you anticipate uh, its mission to be early on, and did you ever feel you could succeed with that entity uh, as well as you have? Mm -hmm. Well, I was approached to consider taking on the CEO position at the Japanese American National Museum. And so when I thought about um, my interest, at, certainly even at that time, was around the issues of diversity and connecting uh, communities together. The opportunity around education, and certainly because of my personal family back background um, and, uh, as it relates to the Japanese American experience, I did see after many, com uh, many conversations that there would be an opportunity to address some of the issues around um, developing a better sense of ethnic relationships, but also the opportunity to further understanding about the Japanese American experience. I, I didn't, my, my father was not in camp, but my grandfather and all of my aunts and uncles were in Rower, Arkansas, one of the World War II camps. And I, I knew very little. When I was growing up, we'd have family gatherings and they'd talk about camp and it was usually about the good times um, and the friends that they knew and so forth. And it wasn't until I went to college and, and did a paper act, actually like a lot of the sanseis, mm -hmm. and, uh, learned about the experience during the college um, time period, was when I re really began to understand more about what had happened and uh, so I think the fact that people didn't know about that and my interest in um, education and then my, my father's own experience uh, in terms of the military were all factors that ultimately led me to decide to take on the position. You elaborate a little bit more about what exactly is the museum and what it does and uh, what its mission is? Well, the uh, museum was founded in 1985 and um, in Los Angeles. Uh, I was asked to join the museum in 1988, and its um, founders intended uh, to create a permanent repository for the Japanese American experience. So it was a, a history a museum, or in, intended to be, uh, that would document and share the experience, I think initially around the World War II experience, but mm -hmm. certainly to include the early um, Issei period. Um, the museum's uh, programming uh, included exhibitions, a permanent collection, uh, and a number of educational programs, both in Los Angeles and throughout the United States. I certainly felt that it was important that the museum uh, certainly work with, but also learn from, uh, and understand how our experiences as Japanese Americans are so connected to many other Americans. We didn't grow mm -hmm. up or we didn't, we, we didn't live in a vacuum. And the more that one can understand that, I think 
it helps understand the diversity of the United States. Mm -hmm. And so the museum, for example, did an exhibition about Boyle Heights, which is a, a community just east of downtown, where in the 19, 1920s, 30s, 40s, many Japanese Americans grew up with other Jewish Americans, um, Hispanic Americans, African Americans. Mm -hmm. And it, in many respects, was kind of one of those places where really the, what's great about the diversity of America mm -hmm. um, was at its best. And so, you know, our, our, the mayor of Los Angeles, Antonio Villaraigosa, grew up there. He grew up with Japanese American neighbors, friends. Uh, and I think those stories help other people understand uh, why the United States diversity mm -hmm. is so important to who we are as a country. You formed the U.S.-Japan Consul about two years ago. What, what do you perceive the mission of that organization to be? Mm -hmm. When I finished work um, and stepped down from the um, National Museum, I, 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 there was still, I think, a period with which a lot more Japanese Americans were interested in U.S.-Japan. There were a number of us doing a variety of different kinds of, of programs related to U.S.-Japan relations. And it seemed as though it was an important time, which was at that time, 2009, to create an organization that would be dedicated to bringing together Japanese American leaders to work specifically on U.S.-Japan related issues. And it, at that time was a period where people were talking about Japan passing and the concern that the interest in U.S.-Japan was waning mm -hmm. and that what was going to happen in terms of the future relationship. So, I mean, certainly um, people like um, Dr. Paul Terasaki, you know, who had spent a lot of time really encouraging people through the work at UCLA and its Japan Center, mm -hmm. and the many other activities um, encouraging that Japanese Americans, younger Japanese Americans in particular, had an opportunity to explore that part of their heritage. The the decision was made by a number of us to create the U.S.-Japan Council. And I don't think we could have predicted the, the important timing of doing that um, as we sit now and, and look at um, what has happened in terms of uh, Japan in the aftermath of the March 11th earthquake and a tsunami. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think what we've learned in the past, um, the past period is that there are a lot of Japanese Americans um, who are in leadership positions that really bring a lot of interest and bring a lot of expertise to the table. So while the museum, in many respects, was a way f to reach out to the Nisei generation to create the museum, mm -hmm. I see where the council um, becomes a way to bring together a lot of the Sansei and Yonsei generation, in some respects, to even broaden the networks and to broaden the opportunity to reconstruct a Japanese American community that was largely destroyed because of World War II. Uh, Irene, I understand that the Consul is in discussions with the U.S. Embassy to coordinate long-term rebuilding efforts within Japan. Uh, could you elaborate a bit on this? I was in Japan on March the 11th when the earthquake and tsunami um, occurred, I was leading the 11th delegation, the Japanese American leadership delegation, and we were on the second to the last day of our trip. A as a result of the earthquake then, the U.S. Japan Council created immediately an earthquake relief fund. And we were very fortunate to have people immediately step up and make, a, uh, make very generous contributions. Mm -hmm. And we've been working very closely with Ambassador John Roos, the current U.S. Ambassador. Uh, he approached the council about in addition to the relief support um, to uh, consider setting up a, a fund that would support the longer term recovery and rebuilding of Japan. And um, the fund will be the uh, Tomodachi Fund for Innovation and Recovery. It'll be administered by the U.S. Japan Council and will work in collaboration with the American Embassy and the State Department. Its intent is to solicit uh, contributions from American companies doing business in Japan, um, as well as from uh, Japanese companies. Many companies, as you know, have made major contributions towards earthquake relief, mm -hmm. as have many individuals. But the real long-term need is from now. And largely, the relief activities have, um, I think, moved 
now into uh, the first stage of recovery and rebuilding. Since your recent marriage uh, to Senator Dan Inouye, some say you folks are the most powerful couple in the United States within our community. Uh, can you give us some view on how you met him and how that evolved? Well, I met the senator uh, early, many, many years ago. I've actually known him for years. Um, he was the chair of the Board of Governors of the Japanese American National Museum. And early on the museum's development, I um, went to see him as I did uh, at that time, Norm Amanetta was in the house and Bob Matsui and all of the, all of the uh, Japanese Americans that were in the congressional delegation. I actually met the senator even before the museum, which um, was through my involvement as one of the, the co-founders of a group called Leadership Education for Asian Pacifics, or LEAP. Uh, and we invited the senator out to speak at one of the initial gatherings to talk about the importance of leadership and leadership development uh, within the Asian American community. So over the years, as um, the senator uh, assisted the National Museum in a variety of different efforts, um, we, we, I would see him at museum events and at meetings and at our annual dinner. Um, his wife, Maggie, um, passed away uh, a few years ago, several years ago, and um, uh, so, one thing led to another. <laughs> and so we were married three years ago. Uh, some have said that uh, opinion in this country is formed by uh, two segments, the uh, area of media and the area of public elected office. Uh, what are your views as it relates to the Japanese Americans' uh, engagement, uh, particularly in these particular areas? Well, I think that's something that uh, we both have felt for a long time. A lot of others, you inclu included, have felt that we really needed to get more Japanese Americans in the political process, be it at appointed positions, elected positions, staff, uh, a whole vari a variety of ways. And there's still a significant need, certainly, for that in Washington. There were many more people in, of Japanese um, descent in the House and the Senate uh, at the time that the redress bill was signed, for example, in 1988. So I believe we do have to do a lot more to encourage our younger people, younger Japanese Americans, to think about not only public service, but mm -hmm. a political service. Mm -hmm. And um, that's been a hard, I think that's been a hard one. Um, you know, we used, to, we used to say that the Niseis, you know, always wanted their Sansei children to go into positions where they would be secure, um, that they you know, would be successful financially and be able to um, uh, ensure that they could uh, provide for their families and so forth. So a lot of Japanese American Sanseis went into various uh, professional positions mm -hmm. and didn't necessarily go into the risky positions, be it in the um, entrepreneurial side in business or in the political side. And when I go to Hawaii, I, you know, there are certainly a lot more Japanese Americans. Of, uh, there are a lot of Japanese Americans in state legislature, predominantly still mm -hmm. Japanese Americans. And yet, I think there, there have not been many who have been willing to step outside of, for example, the Hawaii legislature and think about other positions. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that that's um, something that still really there's a critical need for us to encourage at all levels. I think young people, now that I'm in Washington, I, I see that there are many opportunities for young people to at least um, experience whether Washington is someplace they want to um, eventually end up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so there are internships, there are fellowships, there are, you can be a page in the Senate. You can, there's just many, many opportunities that um, I think we need to uh, make more accessible to our Japanese Americans. And uh, one of the boards that I'm on is the Washington Center, mm -hmm. which does um, in internships in Washington, D.C. And so I've been trying to connect many of the young people that approach me about their interest in being in Washington uh, to uh, the opportunities to do an internship. Um, so I think we have to start at a lot of different le levels, both local, statewide, mm -hmm. um, and certainly national. Irene, do you have any inspirational thoughts uh, for our emerging generations in the future? 
Well, as I said, I, I think in large part because of my upbringing, I, I was um, you know, more inclined to be willing to, to take risks and to try things and to do, do things that you never quite know where it leads. I, I tell young pe people that come to see, to see me and ask me for advice, um, I, tell, I, I encourage them to really build their networks and to really think about the opportunities to get outside of kind of their safe zone or safe circle. I think if I could do one thing, one thing, one thing a different maybe in my life, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I might have wanted to go to school in the East. You know, when I went, I went to a Gardena High School, and I think maybe we had one person that went East to college that I, I can remember, and maybe one other person that went to you know fairly um, significant school. And and I loved being at a, at a Gardena High School, and I think for me it. it contribute a lot to who I am and the people that I, I went to school with and, and are people, that, many of whom I still know. But I never had a career, I never had a college counselor that said that, you know, I could think about other opportunities. And mm -hmm. so I went to USC like a lot of my friends did. When my daughter was applying for school and um, was she knew right away that she was going to go east to school because she had all of her friends um, mm -hmm. considered that that's what they were going to do. And mm -hmm. so she was counseled in, in all the opportunities. And since we took a lot of the college trips east like, like um, a, lot of, a lot of parents do. And I realized just all the opportunities that, um, that she had and that, and I often wondered what my life would be if I had chosen to do that. Mm -hmm. So I encourage young people to, you know, kind of get out of their safe zone. I think people mm -hmm. are comfortable where they are. And, you know, as I think back on people that influenced my life, you know, I had, some, I had a number of teachers in college that were very supportive of sort of doing things outside of the norm. So my, I was taking a speech class and so my, at that time, my a teacher, you know, said that I had to go and be in a speech competition and do that type of thing. Well, I would have not thought about that if it were not for my instructor. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the leadership positions, even in college, I mean, even in high school, were as a result of encouragement from teachers. So I, I, again, I think if, if I were to encourage young people, and they don't have to go back east or they don't have to go whatever, but I think really being willing to, to kind of step outside whatever the boxes that they're mm -hmm. currently in. Mm -hmm. And then as they meet people, and, and I have been fortunate, I think, um, that it's been as a result of people that I knew that kind of the next job or the next board or the next opportunity mm -hmm. came forward. And if you do a good job and if you work hard, <laughs> it sounds like a parent, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I think those are tenants that we know are really true. And I, I think that's one of the real um, advantages, I feel, that from both a family background and a lot of that being from the values of that, uh, that were instilled by my parents and my grandfather, um, that a lot of that is as a result of our Japanese heritage. And a lot of those values of working hard and, and to really um, ensure that you uh, persevere, you don't, you don't give up, um, are things that I think have certainly made a difference in uh, the opportunities that I've had. So I encourage young people to do that. We just need to get our kids and our grandkids to um, just you know, be willing to, um, to think about opportunities. Mm -hmm. They have every opportunity now that even we might not have, have had as readily when we were growing up. And now, you know, it's a wide open door. Uh, and, I, you know, we have really talented, very talented people. So I guess that's what, what I would encourage them to think about a summer internship, um, think mm -hmm. about the, um, the people that you can meet, um, mm -hmm. use that opportunity and, and always stay connected in some way. And um, I think also I encourage young people to volunteer. I, I spent a good part of my life, as did you and as we all still do, being a volunteer. And that's what's led me in many respects to the boards that I've had an opportunity to, to serve on now. 
and it just affords people the chance to try things. It's safe, you know. You can't, you know. They can always fire you, I guess, but we, do, we usually don't follow. We usually, we usually don't fire volunteers. Uh, so I think that's the other and the uh, community. I mean, we care a lot about our Japanese American community in whatever form it's in, whether it's a physical form of, of the, the whether it's the a cultural center, a museum, or whether it's other types of voluntary organizations. And um, I think we have to find ways to keep connected our younger people. Um, but it is a great learning opportunity as well. I mean, I learn every day still <laughs> on the boards that I sit on. And I think it's important. I, I, I can tell you that, that uh, the generation that uh, is emerging uh, has one advantage that we didn't have, and they have uh, uh, Irene uh, Hirano Inoue is a role model, and so uh, it's been uh, very inspirational, your insights, uh, and uh, the uh, inspiration that you've uh, provided to us uh, during this uh, short period of time has been extraordinarily helpful, and we very much appreciate your time and attention to this. Thank, Thank you very Thanks. much for coming. Thanks, Thank you.